Hello again, everyone, and welcome to TV 31 on one for another week with Jim Johnson, the lead pastor at Sunnybrook Christian Church. This week, we want to talk a little bit about Sunnybrook Christian Church. It has been in the middle of Sunnybrook has been in the middle of a campaign to raise funds for an expansion and changing some things around. Why was it the right time? Were there some debates? Those were the sorts of questions we got a chance to start this week's show talking to Jim Johnson. We just went through a, a building campaign. Mm -hmm. And again, you, as I said, you're not afraid to discuss money. It's not something, it's, that's not something that, is, that is hammered at the pulpit. Sure. But it's not something that's ever shied away from either if, sure. it's, if it's what yep. what needs to be spoken on. Yep. Sunnybrook's going through a campaign. Yep. And I, I told a pastor this the other day. I, I am fully on board with it. was from the beginning. I went, you know what, we're, we're growing to the point that to allow more people to come in to have the experience that they need to have. We, it just makes sense to me. But I, I also thought, couldn't help but wonder, how many people might think, well, money can be used for other things. It yeah. can be used to feed people. And, and, yeah. and, 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 and those are all very valid points. Sure. But the but the message that you said, or the, the, the line, and you and I may have been at lunch when you said it. I'm sure you probably said it from the pulpit as well. But this is the line I told a pastor recently, is that the pew that I sit in, yeah. every... A lot of Sundays, yeah. most every Sunday. Most even, every, I, I, I tease you, most every Sunday. I'll give you that. <laughs> Almost all Sundays, somebody paid for. Yeah. So I am benefiting from yep. monies that could have been spent elsewhere. Sure. But there is a there is a discipline in that as well, and it just that really resonated with me. And and obviously Sunnybrook's going through a big campaign, and that that is fantastic. That again, Sunnybrook helps in lots of missions. Sunnybrook sure. helps in a lot of places within our community here in Stillwater. Um, but it's also a, a place that is is growing, and there are new needs. And obviously, that's that was an interesting time, I would think, for you guys as an as an eldership and as a, administrators of a church. Yeah, no, it, it has been very interesting. I had been, um, I won't say reluctant. I'm not afraid to talk about it. Not afraid to give. So those two things have never been an issue. But I get the complexity of it. And so mm -hmm. if I have to talk about raising money for a new building or Jesus, I pick Jesus. I had an elder who said to me one time. So you're going to use this building until it's virtually used up and then just kind of hand off a broken building to the next pastor. Um, wow, when you say that, yeah. I just feel irresponsible. Mm -hmm. So I'm really grateful for the sacrifice of, of, uh, of other pastors and other people who, are, um, who, who sacrifice so that you and I could have what we have. So one of, the, one of my, my biggest issue, Casey, is that I have a real hard time when, when people say the money could be better used. I want to go, oh, so like IZOD is probably not what we should, oh, okay, so what you mean is we probably shouldn't go on family vacation. What you mean is we probably shouldn't, you know, expand on our, what you mean is our kids shouldn't be based, okay, what, what you mean is, <laughs> and they go, oh, well, no, 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 like all those things. So I, I, I really want to stop and ask, before somebody tells me, could our money be better spent, I just ask this question, is that how you spend your money? So before you go out for dinner, could this money be better spent? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, you do would... you make a change? Sure. Going on a family vacation, could this money be better spent? So, and not that not that that means that now. Hey, now I've got a you know I've got a trick answer. It's just like I want you to be consistent with this. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> that's the part of it. So I would say this: over 15 years, we'll do this one campaign. We'll we'll create a great children's space. We'll do some updates. I mean, we have carpet that's like 30 years old. People's houses don't look like that. And so that's the, that's the reason why I feel like it's important, and I'm in, in terms of even what Andrea and I are giving. We're standing in front of the mission wall here at Sunnybrook Christian Church. Sunnybrook has several different missions across the world, as you can see, that they sponsor. We'll talk to Jim more about that in just a little bit. But when we come back, a fun conversation about his wife. Someone that uh, broke up with him a couple of times, and Jim talks about how he dealt with that. Andrea, a beautiful woman, and, uh, and someone that's put up with an awful lot, or at least so we're told. If you haven't been to TS Fork at White Bart Estates lately, we have an exciting new concept to tell you about. It's called Thirsty Thursdays, and it includes four courses of the same high-quality food as our other nights, and some of the best mixed drinks you've ever had. Best of all, no reservations are required. And while you're there, enjoy a drink on the covered patio and check out the gift shop with Made in Oklahoma products. Visit tsfork.com for more details and to check out our upcoming special menus. Neighbors, 
friends, the people we see every day. We come to you today with no news or announcement, but to let you know what's on our hearts. Because quite simply, we feel honored. You're the reason that what we do is so much more meaningful than a job. The reason we believe in the power of investing in tomorrow. But you're also the reason we believe in the power of sharing the same neighborhoods and a loyalty that's bigger than any challenge. So this is simply thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to move forward and grow, but never lose sight of the roots that connect us. As we step boldly into a time of change and innovation, consider this our promise that every investment in our hospital is an investment in our communities. Because you're the reason we love what we do and love where we live. The McCafe is now featuring cold brew coffee and cold brew frappes. Face the day with a cold brew coffee from the McCafe with a rich cold brew coffee blended with ice for a creamy frozen drink that's colder than cold brew. Or refresh with a cold creamy frappe. We start with a cold brew coffee blended ice and topped with whipped cream and rich chocolate drizzle for a great anytime frozen treat. McDonald's in Stillwater, Perkins, Perry, and Cushing. I'm loving it. Kent and Barbara Houck have been saying they're a one-stop shop for many years. In 1951, the Houck Agency began insuring Oklahomans and since has expanded to insure people in 11 states across the country. The Houck Agency can find the policy that fits your needs from business health coverage, individual health, home, auto, and long-term health care policies. They have a staff that can take care of financial planning, including retirement and investing. And Barbara Houck has been a realtor for over 35 years, and her contacts helped her buy and sell homes and commercial properties across the state one stop shop the hauk agency 801 south main in stillwater call statewide toll free at 800-543-8588 the hauk agency when experience counts <laughs> no, it's really like I'm a half coward. Well, no, because I, I think I think honestly, Nugget, this is not a this is not one of our your podcasts, and it, but but I think I think it mo I think even people in the Midwest go through that. I think we all sit oh, there sure. and go, look, sure, I, there, sure. there's the guys that you want to be, you want to like you, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. the girls that you want yeah. to like you. So I'm going to toe the line, but I'm also not going to truly go to their area. I'm going to try to stay in mine. So I'm going to I'm going to walk both sides of yeah, the street yeah. without going too far, so that. Mom and Dad really are convinced that I'm a pretty good kid, and I think I'm doing okay here, and yet if the, I'm not ostracized by the yeah. cool kids. And my parents, I never had the, hey, why can't I go do this with my friends? Mm -hmm. Because I was actually pretty okay during a time in my life to, to play both ends against the middle. And my sister fought it more than I did. I remember even watching that, and I didn't like the disruption it made in our family. Mm -hmm. And so I just never fought it. Yeah. And so in the end, I was willing to kind of be... Um, the the school kid enough during school time, right? And then kind of come home and love my family, and so I never, in essence, kind of pushed the re rebellion envelope because I was enable I was able enough to uh, to convince people mm -hmm. of uh, sadly enough what I wasn't. So when 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 I have my oh I think I'm going to be sick moment on this issue was mm -hmm. um, I was uh, I, I just finished I was studying at the University of Calgary I was studying economics there. And some stuff happened with my girlfriend at the time who uh, she broke up with me and it was a, I was a mess. And so I decided to run away from home and I decided to run away to... You were to in the, college. To the, well, yeah, but I mean, but run away from Canada. Oh, okay. And so I just felt like I had to get away. And so I'm, I'm leaving and I'm going to a Bible college in Joplin, Missouri. That was my plan. And I, I run across a high school friend that I hadn't seen in a long time. Um, and we knew each other, not super close, so but, but close enough. And he had, I knew he had some kind of religious... Thing to him, but we again we weren't super close. And he asked me what I was doing, and I said ah, I'm at the University of Calgary and I'm studying, but I'm actually getting ready to go to Bible college in the states. And he laughed and said to me, "Bible college? I had no idea you were a Christian." And I was class historian at my high school, and so I think, and his name was Scott, and I remember just feeling like sick. I can I can I can feel the moment where I just I knew the indictment that that was against me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't argue with them. I just kind of sat there and I said, no, actually, I am and I always have been. And uh, I just kind of wanted to get out of there. So, so weird. 
So, and, and boy, we could we could get into a lot of different slivers off of that. So, would most of most of your high school friends been shocked if they? If oh they, no, no, like the ones that were like closest to me, they would have would have actually like knew about like for example, they all knew like I would go to church regularly. Mm -hmm. None of them did w right. with me, um, and and so I don't know. I mean, I guess sadly enough. And I, I, I see this a lot in, say, more of the, if, if we would call like a church within a more secular culture, is that there's a little more of a shock that there would be a different way that you as a Christian would live versus me as a non-Christian would live. Like, right. what really is the difference? Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of, in essence, without knowing it, like, you're just going through life, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking about it, but then I'm just trying to be, just trying to have friends at the same time. So I don't think, like, the other ones would be, they would probably, if I if I really pushed them on it, they would go, dude. So you're a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they would say. Is I think they would go. So then, like, why aren't you? I, I really do. I mean, I think that's the scary part. I think they would go. Then why aren't you more like vocal about it, or why aren't you more, um, you know, passionate about it? Why? I mean, I, so that, that that hurts a little bit. So it's a lot. A question that really means nothing, but I'm just kind of curious. What w would you have associated your youth faith with a denomination? Yeah, so I grew up what is known in Canada. It's extremely small. Down in the south, it's a little more known. So Baptist? it was a, no, Church, Church of Christ. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, Baptist. You, yeah, obviously, the, there's lots of Baptists, uh, right? Uh, <laughs> See well, one above your head. Well, I, know, I know that. I understand. You said down south, though. There's, there's few, a few there's Baptists <laughs> down south. <laughs> but Church of Christ, not instrumental. Yeah. So I grew up in the what is known as the, it's called the Restoration Movement. So there's a groups of three different groups of churches that kind of associate with that. And uh, we, I grew up, my parents came to faith in a non-instrumental Church of Christ, so no piano. Wow. So truly, you know, I mentioned Ken Houck earlier, right? Church yeah, of Christ. Church yes, of Christ. Yes, there yep, you go. Yep, yep. Met uh, a young lady, now besides the one that broke up with you, made you want to run away to Bible college, right? By the name of Andrea. Yep. Uh, really fell hard for her. Oh, man. She didn't fall for you. No. Well, Initial, initially, no, 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 no. Initially, she did. Oh, then she got initially, to know you. Oh yeah. So we start dating. I was seventeen. She was fifteen. Okay. So and and we both still believe that our parents should have done a better job parenting. <laughs> um, so yeah. So we date from seventeen to fifteen until I'm nineteen and she's seventeen. And when she's graduating from high school, mm -hmm. she kind of, I'm done. And I was. Uh, is two that years when you were school. going to Bible school? Is so that, that's is this I the ran kid? away this from her. One. Yeah, yeah, I ran away yeah. from her. So okay, so I, you know, I knew I, I didn't realize that was the breakup. But although I did know you, yep, you've yep, been dating yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So okay, I'm running off to Bible school, but then Bible college. Bible, Bible college. Bible excuse me. Bible school sounds uh, like you want a BBS. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being, they, you know. I didn't say there's nothing wrong with it. It's a just lot. a little different than college. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Sometimes I've heard your sermon. It's like BBS. <laughs> I'm just saying right now. Okay, so I'm trying every <laughs> week, buddy. Uh, so you, so you break up. Did you actually get to Joplin before you got back together? Oh yeah. So I leave. I, I leave. Um, me and actually another friend of mine who was a previous. This is this, yeah. This is weird. Um, an ex-girlfriend and I both both decide to go to Bible college yes. in Missouri. Yeah. And so her parents drove us down, and then my parents picked us up and drove us back at Christmas time. So this would have been in the fall of 88. Wow. And so uh, for four months, um, I lived in Joplin, Missouri, going to Bible college. And so you go back for Christmas. Go back for Christmas. And did you get reacquainted proposed, with Andrea? Proposed to her. I got in on a Saturday night, and by lunchtime the next day, I proposed. So, okay. Well, proposed. Te technically, our proposal wasn't for a little while, but we, um, we, we kind of hung out after church, and I just, and I, I can't tell you how much I really love this girl. So. so, you break up, she breaks up with you. Oh, yeah. You're dating for a couple of years, year, year and a half, Two whatever. Years. Two years. Yeah. You go to Bible college. Yep. Come back after one semester at yep. Christmas. Yep. And it's rekindled. Yes. And she breaks up again. Or no, no at no, this no, point. No, okay, no, no. okay. Technically, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So technically, she broke up one other time before, okay. the, before the big one. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but, it, but it lasted like we uh, were on a break. It, it lasted two weeks. It okay. lasted two weeks. So this one long. So then, all right. So this one was like four months, four or five. No, actually, some. It was from mid May because it was around my birthday. She bought me a bicycle. And then, like, the week after that, broke up with me. <laughs> I beat that bike to death. Uh, that's, I mean, I don't even know what to do with that one. Uh, wow. So, 
So then you go back and you get, re so does she, do you get married at that point? No. You go back to Bible college? No, no, no. We, so, you know, it was you interesting. You are a complicated man. I know. I mean, I can't tell you how much I just had a genuine, she would even say a little bit like obsession. Yeah, sure. I, but, I understand And that, you know yeah. my personality. <laughs> but I mean, I just, I literally, we speak, we, we could tell something was going to happen again. And I said to her, either I go back to the States and I think I'm going in another direction or we get married. Which, you know, at that time she was 18 years old. I don't know if I recommend an 18-year-old girl go, okay, let's just get married. Like, yeah. we look back on it and, we, you know, we, we see God's hand in part of it. Sure. Um, or I, maybe in, in all of it in that sense. But I just, I think I'd give my sons different advice. I'd be yeah. so concerned. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we we talk about it. for we, we literally do. We talk We talk about it and we pray about it. I did a lot of growing up. Um, God did a lot of work on my heart in those four months. And I would even say equally on hers. And so when we came back together, we were different people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say some, some amazing work that God did, like in my heart. And, and she would even tell you, I came back a different person. Sure. And I saw a different her. Sure. And so it worked out really, really well. And uh, we got married the following August. So it'll be 30 years wow. in just a couple of months. The Hideaway since 1957. The Hideaway is famous for a lot of things, including their off-the-charts fried mushrooms, incredible service, unbeatable lunch specials, and, of course, the one-of-a-kind pizza. Stillwater's pizza tradition begins and ends here, from the big country to the pizza of the gods. And even the sizes are famous, from the mini personal to the big kahuna. Like us on Facebook for unique offers, lunch or dinner, dine-in, pickup, or delivery. The Hideaway, 230 South Mount Block, or call 372-4777. More than a restaurant, it's a tradition. Whether you're looking for a small concert venue like the Bob Childers Gypsy Cafe or a big stage at the Tumbleweeds Calf Fry Festival, America's friendliest college town is going to be rocking this May. Where the flowers are waving and the music will get you swaying. Enjoy a concert in the garden right here at the Botanic Garden at OSU. We can't wait to welcome over 5,000 Olympic athletes competing in nine events and swinging for the gold. Support local farmers, learn about seasonal produce, and discover new fruits and veggies at the Stillwater Farmers Market located at the Prairie Arts Center. Check out the real professionals at the Aggie Cattle Dog Show at the Payne County Expo Center. How can you celebrate National Tourism Week? Pick one of the three round trip flights through Stillwater Regional Airport at flystillwaterok.com. Don't miss a beat in America's friendliest college town. Check out our full listing of events at visitstillwater.org. Kent and Barbara Hauke have been saying they're a one-stop shop for many years. In 1951, the Hauke Agency began insuring Oklahomans and since has expanded to insure people in 11 states across the country. The Hauke Agency can find the policy that fits your needs from business health coverage, individual health, home, auto, and long-term health care policies. They have a staff that can take care of financial planning, including retirement and investing. And Barbara Hauke has been a realtor for over 35 years, and her contacts helped her buy and sell homes and commercial properties across the state. One-stop shop, the Hauke Agency, 801 South Main in Stillwater. Call statewide toll-free at 800-543-8588. The Hauk Agency, when experience counts. So you go up there, but then you don't get, you, you end up back in Johnwood, so, yeah, but so, not immediately. So two years. Okay. We, two years we sit out, and I worked for a bank for a while. And you were going to be an investment guy. Financial, plan, financial yeah, planner. Financial planner. Financial planner. So you've seen what. Because I had no, I had no, like I'm, even, a, even a semester in Bible college, and everybody else was training for ministry, I don't remember a thought of, I think I'll be a pastor. Yeah. Like not once. Yeah. So. Even though you've seen the work and you've gone back and and now things are great now you're married. Yep. Um, why did why did you end up back in in Joplin? Because I couldn't imagine studying the Bible um, uh, anywhere other than where I was studying it. There. I mean, I met a group of people and found a biblical community like I'd never experienced before, and I began to to have some um, very gifted teachers and communicators that um, ignited something in me uh, that was quite profound. Yeah. And so that's when I thought, okay, if I'm going to go back, then I'm, I'm going to go back here. We, Andrew and I had like a scare. We thought she was pregnant. So we decided in May of 90, 
May of ninety. So we By got the married way, in eighty nine. After you after you're married. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it would have been in important May. Important for this yes, part of no, the story. Exactly. Mom and dad are going to see this eventually. I just <laughs> it would have been yeah. May. It, well, her mom passed away. So oh, that's right. Mom. That's right. So well, I met um, your mom and yeah, dad. Yeah, no, my but, mom yeah, and dad, yeah. and maybe her dad. And her dad. There yeah. you go. So uh, it would have been in like either May or June. It was in the summertime uh, when we were planning to leave the next January, and she said, "I think I might be pregnant." And I, I still remember being so upset because I was so excited about moving to the States mm -hmm. and this new life that I thought Andrew and I would have. And I still remember uh, going to the Safeway to buy a pregnancy test <laughs> and just like telling God, like, if she's pregnant, I don't want to go into ministry. Like, I don't, because I don't want to, because she kept saying, well, we can just go to Bible college here in Canada and we can, and I didn't want any part of it. I still remember being so frustrated. I remember being really grateful that we weren't pregnant. Yeah. So, but it was one of those real, I, I wanted to go back to Joplin to study there. So you, obviously, I know the deep affection you have for the school there. Yeah. Um, not only did you go there and then eventually graduate, and we'll get to some of the rest of the story, but then you went back and taught there for a yeah. long time. Six years. Still very associated with the, with the Bible college. I'll be there tomorrow there. at a trustee meeting. And there, so, there, so there you go. <laughs> Still very well connected. And it all started with that, that, that one semester. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And it was... I mean, I still remember calling my, so if any of you have driven kind of from on, on 71 from uh, uh, from Kansas City to Joplin, so there's some of those cities that you hit, and one of them is Carthage, and I remember seeing a sign that said, Jesus is Lord of Carthage, and I'd never seen the name Jesus that I could remember in public, Wow. and I remember talking to my parents about it, and then it just as you come through Webb City, there is these, these big hands, and it says like a world in prayer is a world in peace or something underneath it. And I remember calling my parents and going, okay, I saw these praying hands. There's a, there's like a statue. It's out in public. <laughs> and so I was I was like shocked by this. And there are churches everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away by it. So what the Midwest kind of gets teased for was actually something I've never understood why. I understand, I understand why Christian people are mad or frustrated or even, uh, you know, somehow don't appreciate um, the the Christian community that exists, like, I get it comes with it comes with its own goofiness, mm -hmm. um, which I do think is goofy too. But it's 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 weird. I was I was just mesmerized by the whole thing. Were, what did it scare you, or did it or did you go? Did it feel like home and feel oh, like it felt a, like home? It, felt, it didn't feel like okay, this place is psycho. No, it felt like home. Like wow. it felt like, I, you know, weirdly enough, I just I've always thought like that heaven would be like a little bit of a version of the Midwest, <laughs> um, without its goofiness. Sure, right? Because sure. again, I mean, I'm I'm still very even in terms of my thinking. In terms of my upbringing, whether you want to call it postmodern or whether, like when I tell stories about like what it was like in my high school mm -hmm. and the things that um, like my high school promoted, mm -hmm. you would be, your mouth would hang open. Whether you're looking for a small concert venue like the Bob Childers Gypsy Cafe or a big stage at the Tumbleweeds Calf Fry Festival. America's friendliest college town is going to be rocking this May. Where the flowers are waving and the music will get you swaying. Enjoy a concert in the garden right here at the Botanic Garden at OSU. We can't wait to welcome over 5,000 Olympic athletes competing in nine events and swinging for the gold. Support local farmers, learn about seasonal produce, and discover new fruits and veggies at the Stillwater Farmers Market located at the Prairie Arts Center. Check out the real professionals at the Aggie Cattle Dog Show at the Payne County Expo Center. How can you celebrate National Tourism Week? Pick one of the three round trip flights through Stillwater Regional Airport at flystillwaterok.com. Don't miss a beat in America's friendliest college town. Check out our full listing of events at visitstillwater.org. To our neighbors and friends, we come to you today to let you know what's on our hearts. Because you're the reason what we do is so much more meaningful than a job. The reason we believe in the power of investing in tomorrow and the power of community. So this is simply thank you. As we step boldly into a time of growth and change, consider this our promise that every investment in our hospital is an investment in our communities. If you haven't been to TS Fork at White Bart Estates lately, we have an exciting new concept to tell you about. It's called Thirsty Thursdays, and it includes four courses of the same high quality food as our other nights, and some of the best mixed drinks you've ever had. Best of all, no reservations are required. 
And while you're there, enjoy a drink on the covered patio and check out the gift shop with Made in Oklahoma products. Visit tsfork.com for more details and to check out our upcoming special menu. just all there is to it so you marry Andrea at that point did you go okay I'm going back to Joplin and I'm going to go to Bible College and I am going to be a pastor or did you know at that point really why you were going back to Bible College so after we were married two years mm -hmm. and uh, I won a year and a half almost two years and that is when I uh, I was doing well in this in this in my financial in my, planning yeah where world. I was where the company I was working for and I just knew that someday I'd be 40. So maybe I've shared the story with you, but I, I knew I'd be 40. And I, I just remember- 10 years ago, by the way, 10 plus years. 10, 10, almost 11. So I just remember thinking that, you know, everybody talks about, you know, you kind of wake up when you're 40 and you look at your life. And I could see that my life would be pretty good in a lot of respects. And yet I just, God had continued to do a work on me. And you and I have this in common, is that we don't shy away from conversations about faith and about like th real things that matter, no matter what the cost, right? That's, and I think that's God putting that in our hearts. And I've never been able to, I mean, I, I grew up in terms of like, okay, I'm done playing the game. And all of a sudden I'm a different person. And I'm the, kind of the me that I always wanted to be in that sense. And I just kind of looked back and thought, I, I think when I'm 40, if I keep going down this road, I'm gonna be disappointed. So um, I come home one day and I told Andrea, this is what I think we need to do and go into ministry that was in may of 90 and january of 91 like we started doing some real intentional stuff and in january of 91 we moved to the states came to bible college kids came a long win uh so we, i came in 91 matt was born in uh, 93 summer of 93 mac summer of 95 when i was leaving for grad school and so where was grad school uh L lincoln illinois so oh. springfield and that's is that where you got your first church so no, I mean, actually I had, I, I would say that there was a small church in Ontario that Andrew and I worked for with two summers, just south of Toronto, okay. just on, on Lake Erie. Um, and then there was a church that Andrew and I were pretty much working full time at in the Joplin area. Um, and then there was, uh, and then there was that church in Illinois, at, in Ipava, Illinois, wow. small little farming wow. community. So, and then that, I was there for, for three years when I went to grad school. Had th have three kids. Three boys. And uh, the youngest is now? The youngest uh, would be, he was born in 98, so 21. Wow, 21 years yeah. old. And then we, we, we have another son, Sergio. Right. So. Um, Which you can explain, Sergio is. Yeah, so, um, you know, we have a ministry field that we, we have in Mexico, and uh, um, there's a young boy, he was in the eighth or the ninth grade at the time, and uh, heard me give uh, kind of a, a, a I, I'll make statements kind of boldly. And so, uh, <laughs> no, I guess, <laughs> no. I made, I made, you know, we've had a number of international mm -hmm. students and people live with us. And so I made a statement when I was speaking at this Christian school um, that if anyone else come live with us, they can. And so he went home and asked his mom if he could move to Stillwater. Wow. And so Sergio came and was here for all of high school and is now a sophomore at Oklahoma State. So he's our fourth son. And officially adopted he? Well, I mean, we were guardians. He is a mom. Okay. Um, and a stepdad. Uh, but in terms of like legal guardianship, he was born. He's a he was born in the U.S., mm -hmm. but his mom is not American, so she can't come across. Okay. But he is free to come. So she gave to us legal guardianship for all of high school and all of that. So he calls us mom and dad, but he's got a great mom back home. That's going to wrap it up for TV 31 on one this week. We wrap up the show today from our youth group. This is one of the meeting rooms for the youth groups here at Sunnybrook Christian Church. And we'll take a, a week break and come back and talk to Jim Johnson. Our final time, we'll talk about a lot of other things. We'll talk to him about his favorite scripture. We'll talk to him about just some of the many challenges of continuing his faith and being a leader of a church. There's so many different topics we'll get into. We still have those remaining with Jim Johnson. That's next time on TV 31 on 1.